Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us again tonight for our Sunday night zap chats here with the Ovis community. My name is Elsa Ramon. I am a co-founder of Ovis, the Ovis community. And if you don't know about us, we've been having our news nerd zap chats every Sunday night, and we have a guest with us every Sunday night. And our primary focus is to talk about fake news, misinformation, disinformation, uh, deep fakes, uh, manipulated photos and videos, because our entire community is about ending all of that in journalism. If you haven't heard about Ovis and checked out our community, you can go to ovis.news and learn a lot more. But I can tell you our community is different in that it is going to offer content and news and information and video and pictures that are free of all of that other stuff that we just talked about, the misinformation and fake news, that stuff is not going to be found in our community. And part of the reason it's not going to be found is that we're relying on technology to help us weed this out. We're relying on blockchain technology. We're relying on a token curated registry, which we have a lot more about on our website at ovis.news. Um, but we also, are ridding ourselves of bots in our community as well, because everybody who becomes part of the OWIS community is going to be verified. Bots are a particularly huge problem, especially on social media when it comes to spreading misinformation and trying to uh, make major changes in and create chaos actually in uh, political elections and within our society. And we saw these problems. All of us, almost all of us have a news and journalism background. Some of us come from television news. Some of us come from print news, but we've all worked in the media and corporate media and the legacy media outlets for each individually uh, over 20 years. So we've seen the problems that have plagued corporate media. And it's not just all of the outside forces that are coming in uh, when we talk about fake news and bots and everything else that's related with that, but also the corporate media has played a role in its own demise and its own trustworthiness of the information that it puts out every day. So what we're doing with the Ovis community through technology is eliminating uh, the appeasement of the corporate shareholders for the corporate media. We don't have a corporate media that decides what you, we think you should watch or what you want covered. This is all community based and we're based on a consensus. So we allow you, the people who are part of our community to choose the news they want to see, the news they want covered by our journalists the information they want fact-checked by our community of fact-checkers that we'll have uh, in the Ovis community, which other outlets, at least in the United States, don't have as part of their regular staff. That's how another reason how we're different. But we're aiming to end all of that fake news and everything else involved with it so you, that you know when you get information from our community, from Ovis, that it's free of all of that other stuff that influences what people see, how they think, what they feel, and play on those emotions. We're going to be free of that, and we hope that in the future, if you do find information that you're concerned about and you're not sure if it's true, you can always Ovis it, and that's hashtag Ovis it. What we're aiming to do is have people have a place to come when they're second guessing some of the information that they're seeing out there on social media and other uh, forms of media out there, you can run it through us at Ovis by hashtagging Ovisit and we'll give you a way to connect with a fact checker and journalist to check the information for you so that you know what you're reading is verified and uh, accurate news. So in a nutshell, that's what we aim to do in the Ovis community, and we certainly hope that you'll become a part of it by going to ovis.news and checking out what you need to do to become an inaugural member. It's free, 
but the benefits will last a lifetime, we are hoping. And this isn't just a project we're seeing or we want to see in the United States. We are eventually going to have a global network of fact checkers and journalists and community members who just want basically a safe haven for accurate news. Um, so we certainly hope you become part of our, our revolution and our big change in news as we see it today. So if you've been joining us every Sunday for our chats about this, you know that we start with our chief fact checker here in the Ovis community, Kara Manal. He is our chief fact checker that we have joined us before we get to our interview guest. And we talk about some of the things that uh, are plaguing uh, the facts, uh, some current things going around social media that people have questioned whether or not it's real. And we talk about everything that's involved with fake news and misinformation and disinformation. So welcome, Kara. Welcome to our Sunday night news nerd zap chats. <laughs> Glad to have you back as always. Um, and as you guys, oh, well, it's always good to have you. And as you guys know, I, I can't emphasize this enough, but our fact checking community is going to be the backbone of Ovis and our Ovis community because without the facts and without them being checked, I mean, we're really not that much, we wouldn't be that much different from other news organizations. We're, uh, as far as we know, um, the only community, news community, that's going to use technology to weed out the stuff that is really creating chaos and division in our community, and that's fake news. So, Karim, uh, we uh, have a couple of things to talk about. Um, I know we've talked about uh, sometimes technology creating a perfect storm. We've talked about that before with a previous guest. But, but we are narrowing it down today because we're talking about misinformation on the go in the form of apps, uh, technology that's available on our phones. And if you think about it, misinformation or ways to alter video or pictures have been around for a lot longer than maybe people realize because uh, maybe they don't put them in this category, but there are apps to do just about everything you want to do. If you want to whiten your teeth, in a picture, you can get an app that will whiten the teeth of everybody in the picture. If you want to appear taller, there's an app to do that. I, there was at one point I remember face tuning where you can, you know, perfect your face if you're putting it on a dating app. And, you know, I, I, the list goes on and on and on. So people have been participating in, in altered media and misinformation for a lot longer than they may realize. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, when Snapchat was kind of gaining its popularity, it was used as a face swapping tool. I remember my friends face swapping each other's faces on each other, and that was kind of how this deep fake started, right? That was the beginning part of deep fake. And we saw it being done on our small cell phones. And that kind of shows how important and how, um, how critical these mobile devices we now have that are basically computers in our pockets can do and they can do a lot of damage they could do fun and goofy things as well but you know they can always um, alter images change videos right now we have TikTok videos that you know can be um, what's it called sliced so you can uh, put two images together and you know you can create all sorts of misinformation using your small mobile device and that's kind of what we have to understand and adapt to as journalists um, where I see it's become a little bit more dangerous, and I believe you and I have talked about this before, is that these types of apps and this type of technology is consumer-based. It is now widely available, um, albeit not perfected, but still widely available to people on the consumer level. So that aids in the spread of the misinformation as well. Right. Right now, almost anyone can do a face swap. Almost anyone can do a very basic, you know, what a deep fake does is basically put someone else's face on someone else. Almost anyone can do that on their phone using a, a simple app, a face swap app on, on the Play Store will allow you to do that. And so what we're meant to do here is try to explain to people how they can spot these misinformations, how can they spot um, what the truth is. And that, for that, we need to um, up the media literacy that people are getting. We need to explain people 
what they should be looking at, what they should be looking looking in um, social media posts, how they should be um, addressing these posts, and if they should be believing everything they see online. And by explaining more um, what about what media literacy is to people, we'll hope to gain more about of an understanding of what these products can do and how, um, as consumers, we can combat it. Uh, you know, med media literacy kind of sounds almost cliche, but it's actually, it's, or, or some just kind of way to label um, maybe second guessing what you see online, but the more misinformation is dispersed out there and the better the technology gets in faking uh, video and pictures, the more that phrase and that term is going to gain importance. It's not just a throwaway term or a fancy way to talk about things that you should second guess, but I believe uh, in the very near future, it's going to become uh, necessary to be media literate. And um, at least the very basics must be known about spotting fakes and second guessing everything you see online. There was something in particular, Karen, that we saw earlier this week involving the Grinch, right? Uh, there was a picture of the Grinch and it had kind of a, you know, a sexual innuendo phrase as part of an advertisement for pistachios. And it looked like it was a, 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 you know, a display set up at the grocery store with the pistachios. And there was a picture of the Grinch and it had this, you know, kind of sexually charged or this innuendo uh, about the pistachio nuts and the Grinch. Okay. If you want to go yeah. find it, people watching, you can go search it yourself. But <laughs> I mean, part of the, it, it was, it was funny to people who find that uh, kind of humor uh, funny, but um, it was also, you know, I mean, people really thought that this could possibly be real, that an advertiser and a marketer actually did set up these displays in grocery stores with the Grinch and this saying, but there were some things on that picture that you pointed out to all of us that allowed you to see right away that it was fake. I mean, yeah, it was very believable. Um, but I just didn't think a supermarket would do that. Yeah. So I kind of looked a bit deeper. It was very obvious. There was kind of a um, Instagram tag on the picture, and uh, that wouldn't be there usually. I mean, if it was an original picture, it wouldn't be there. So that kind of pushed me towards um, looking more into it. And then since it was a couple of years ago, I think, um, I saw a Snopes article about it, and that was kind of the easiest fact check I've done. Um, but, yeah, th I mean, there's a lot of ways – that we can do fact checking. It's not there's not one rule to do everything because um, fact checking isn't always on pictures, on videos. It could be a caption, it could be a tweet, like it could be text based. Um, it could be a SMS. You know, we have, we had a lot of SMS based misinformation on during this election cycle. So um, it's important to understand, mm -hmm. you know, your own emotions during under, trying to figure out if it's a misinformation or not. So you first think about if if how it looks. Is it original, right? Who posted it? So if it's if it's an original post, who posted it? What kind of account is it? What kind of pictures or videos or or, or posts does that account do? Um, and then, so why is it why is this account sharing it? Right, we have to go more a bit more deeper and try to understand their motive in sharing it. Is it a political play? Is it, you know, are they trying to um, do a, a a word play there? So what is their motive doing it? And then if you do think if you come to the terms that you think that you should look more a bit more into it, then you go to the source. So if it's like a text-based thing, you, you do some online searching and you go to verified sources or trusted sources. And that, you could be a peer-reviewed article. It could be a government source. So you go to source and you try to understand what the truth is. And the most important thing is you don't share unless you verify it yourself because that's how you kind of stop the spread of misinformation. If we all continue to spread and share things that we're not that certain of, that's how we're going to continue spreading it. Right. And the temptation for people to spread things that spark an emotional right. reaction to something is extremely high. In fact, it's it's uh, relied upon by people who are trying to spread the misinformation. They rely Absolutely. on um, that emotional response, eliciting that emotional response. In fact, that's probably one of the main things, ingredients that's needed to spread misinformation. So. Um, again, uh, another way to maybe question yourself is, 
how emotionally charged did you get from seeing whatever it is you're seeing um, on social media? Would you say right. that is, is a good red flag for somebody to to consider if if they're wondering whether or not it's true? Yeah, so if it sparks an emotion and if you you got angry at the tweet, don't retweet it, you know, check it out again. Um, think about it. Think about why you got emotionally charged and think about the consequences if it's not true. And, you know, you always have to kind of gauge what you're posting now. It's, it's not, it's not, you're not in your own bubble anymore. It's kind of, it's, it's out there after you publish it. So it's always important to do that. Don't, don't tweet angry. <laughs> it's probably right, a good don't rule. Don't, <laughs> don't tweet angry. Don't, don't push that on anything you might regret. All right, Karim, thank don't you so much angry. for, <laughs> yeah, or, or retweet. Correct. Exactly. Because it's, it's just as damaging as, as tweeting it yourself, of course. All right, Karim Inal, our chief fact checker, as always. It's great to have you with us and starting the show. But for tonight's show, I'd love for you to stick around just a little bit longer because I love when you're able to join in on the conversation when we bring in the guest. And this one, um, you're very familiar with the bit of fake news that we're about to talk about here with our guest. So our guest is Alex Lazar. He's currently the administrative business partner for Google but he does have an extensive political background. He was the Director of Neighborhood Services for the Office of Mayor London Breed, Mayor of San Francisco, and also uh, a senior congressional aide for Congresswoman and Speaker Nancy Pelosi. So Alex, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I also thank Very you, thank glad you for to having have me, you. and a pleasure to join you, Karen. Likewise, thank you all. Um, so, Alex, I know you were standing by in the waiting room as Karim and I were having the discussion about uh, fake news and, um, you know, apps and certain technology on the consumer level that's allowing people to spread misinformation and disinformation um, and fake news a lot easier as the technology improves and especially yep. as it becomes more available to people on the consumer level. Um, right. You've certainly, with a background in politics, had your fair share of dealing with um, being bombarded with fake news and situations that came up where you had to probably defend yourself or the person you were working for, yes. specifically Nancy Pelosi, against uh, fake memes and videos and things like that. Right. Uh, you did have an experience. It's probably one of the most well-known videos that uh, was passed around on social media. You did have your own personal experience with um, manipulated media while you were working for Speaker Pelosi. Right. Well, there was the, the video from the Center for American Progress, the Ideas Conference, um, that was actually slowed down to about 75% of the original speed. Um, the speaker's voice was distorted, uh, kind of made her sound drunk. Um, a couple of weeks after that, there was another very similar video that was put out there. Um, and the tough thing is, is that, you know, once the video was out there, even though you could figure out how to determine whether it was fake or whether it was, you know, not not a real video, whether it was manipulated, it's like the genie was out of the bottle at that point, right? Mm -hmm. At that point, the video had been shared, it had been posted on Facebook, it had been posted on Twitter and kept being shared. Um, and that's the thing. And, and as to Karim's point earlier about not sharing these things, well, there is sometimes this nefarious group of people that want to share things like that. They want to create things like that in order to muddy the water, in order to be able to say, oh, well, look at look at at this person. They're they're now drunk. And, and, and why are you listening to them? Um, so it really then it becomes incumbent upon us to hold back from not only just sharing that, but by falling for the what folks are trying to trap you into. So, I mean, being in politics and with the background in politics that you have, um, what are your thoughts on the technology, especially the technology available on our cell phones? Uh, what are your yeah. thoughts on the effect these apps and this kind of technology has on everything we see online? 
Right. Well, you know, it, it really is about the way that an individual sees themselves, ultimately. Um, you know, not to get too psychological about things, but um, to use a, a parallel example, uh, we talked about like the face swapping apps. Um, there are a lot of filters. You know, I, I received a lot of uh, Christmas cards even this cycle for my cousins and, and their faces were all kind of washed out and, and glittered up or, or not, not really their true self. And um, when I was thinking about this a little more, it was, you all remember the, the Polar Express movie that came out about a, 10 years ago where yes, the special yes. effects were almost like an uncanny valley where yeah. it was to the point yeah. that it was disturbing. And now we've reached this point where we're turning ourselves into those caricatures of an uncanny valley version of ourself that we're putting out there. Um, and so at the same line, I think that, that, that now that, that our society is getting more comfortable of hiding behind these filters in this virtual age, it really opens up the ability to, oh, well, then that video of Pelosi being drunk Sure, that that's a possibility. You know, it starts to really uh, muddy the water when it comes down to what's real and what's not. So, when when something like that happened, that infamous video with Nancy Pelosi, and at the time you were uh, a senior aide in her office, it was. I mean, to put the toothpaste back in the bottle of obviously is back in the tube is impossible. So going forward. Right. How did you guys um, approach this situation and how did you try to at least rectify the situation? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the, the, the sad thing is, is that, for example, on Facebook, um, once this was evident that it was a fake video, um, Facebook didn't want to take it down. Um, you know, there, there was a quote from Mark Zuckerberg where they wanted to find the right balance between encouraging free expression and promoting a safe and authentic community. So, you know, uh, is this the social media networks, wh whichever one you may want to, to point out, then saying, you know, oh, well, this is like a video of President Trump as a baby. You know, you know that's so ridiculous. No one's going to believe that that's real. That's just someone being creative. You know, this person is in the public domain. That that's just, you know, something that we can do. Right. Um, and it's difficult because all you can really do, you know, from a from a legislative position, from a from the official position is just point out the fact that these things are out there, that these things are, are not real. It, it then becomes the, the ability or the, the power that, that these companies have to be able to correct that misinformation out there. And Karen, would you uh, I'm sure you would agree with that, but. Um, I'm sure you also, as our chief fact, check, fact checker, have something to add on top of that as well. Well, I think what, what we as journalists need to do is get out of our own bubbles, as fact checkers especially, get out of our own bubbles and try to reach the people who are actually spreading the misinformation. I mean, I know most of, a lot of them are spreading it purposely and they actually have, uh, you know, bad agendas and reasons to spread it. But there are also those people who are pressing the reshare button because they think it's real. And those are the people as journalists and fact checkers that we have to reach and we have to connect with them in, in a way that um, we could be able to show them the truth instead of them looking at other um, unverified sources for the truth. Uh, and, and would you agree? I think you, oh, Karim, you already answered this question, but Alex, I, would you say one of the biggest vulnerabilities with people who are consuming information on the internet is that they allow their emotions to make the decisions on the things that they see and whether or not they're going to reshare them or believe them or retweet them or whatever it is they do with it? Sure, absolutely. You know, I think that, that we all put on this persona um, that, that lives in the, the virtual world, let, let it be the internet, let it be social media, um, let it be Christmas cards that come in the mail. Um, you know, the, the, this facade that, that, that exists um, is based upon, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a licensed uh, psychologist, but maybe there's a little bit of insecurity there of, of, of us not wanting to put on our, our full self out there and thus allowing this, this ability for there to be manipulation. Um, either from ourselves manipulating others to appear to look younger or appear to look, you know, more hair, um, or you know, slowing people down and, and, and turning a politician into into looking like a drunk person. So it really is a lot of not only um, catching on the emotional responses, but also preying upon people's insecurities. 
So if you are interested in learning more, please go to our website, our Ovis community at ovis.news and you can learn a lot more about what we're doing there. If you want anything fact checked, by the way, just use the hashtag, just Ovis it. And we are hoping to get you to come to our website and check anything you'd like with our fact checkers to see if it's something that uh, is factual or not. Thank you guys so much for joining us on Sunday night on a holiday weekend. And we hope to see you soon for our next Zap Chat next Sunday. And um, hopefully you will bring along a friend as well. Until then, have a happy weekend, a great rest of your week, and happy new year, everybody.